Welcome to my grade 11 review of chemistry. This is the fourth part in the series out of seven. This is from Compounds to Reactions. And uh, we're going to start by discussing the bonding between atoms, uh, in particular two kinds of bonding, covalent and ionic. So let's distinguish between the two. Chemical bonds involve a sharing of one or more pairs of electrons. Covalent bonds is where the electron pair is more or less equally shared between both atoms. This happens when the electronegativities of both atoms are somewhat close or preferably equal. This happens most often when two nonmetals are bonded. Now ionic bonds is where the electron pair in the bond is unequally shared between the two atoms. This happens when the electronegativities of one element is significantly greater than the other you know by a lot not just close you know not just a little bit unequal but very unequal and when that happens it's usually one of the more electronegative um, atom takes all of the electron density for itself so the electrons that means the electrons will spend more time on one atom than with the other and the atom that it will favor will be the atom with the greater electronegativity this happens most often in bonds between a metal and a nonmetal. So let's talk about nomenclature of binary compounds. Let's name some of these. Now uh, you can pause the video and uh, uh, I will be silent for a few seconds and then come back on. But try to name all of these. Okay, so uh, we have NaCl being sodium chloride, BaCrO4 being barium chromate, ZnSO4 being zinc sulfide, zinc sulfate I mean, NH4NO2, that's ammonium nitrate, two permanganates bonded to a nickel is nickel two permanganate, uh, two bicarbonates bonded to a lead is lead two bicarbonate, and as we see here, P2O5, that's two phosphoruses and five oxygens, that's diphosphorus pentoxide. Now notice that last one's a little different. Diphosphorus, we counted the phosphoruses, two of them. Pentoxide says that there is five oxygens. We can actually rewrite the entire formula from the name. Um, it's rather remarkable that we could not do it with the others. For example, uh, because there's two permanganates, why couldn't we call that dipermanganate? Notice we did not. And that's because that's how, um, that's how we name ionic compounds. We name ionic compounds not needing to count how many atoms are bonded to each other. And so uh, all we do is, uh, if, there's ever, if there's ever a doubt as to, say, the, elect the um, oxidation number of, say, nickel, because uh, nickel exists as nickel one, nickelus and nickelic, uh, which which one of these are there? Uh, we could say nickel one or nickel two, um, nickel because nickel can exist as either plus one or plus two. Um, we just say which nickel it is, so we say nickel two permanganate. Uh, we don't say that for phosphorus or oxygen. Um, for diphosphorus pentoxide, it's where a, 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 a nonmetal is bonded to a nonmetal. We that's a covalent compound, and uh, the covalent compounds are named by counting the atoms. Um, notice we did not say monosodium monochloride; it's just sodium chloride. BaCrO4. If that was BaCl2, in fact, that's the only thing it could be. If, if, if this chromate were replaced by chlorines, we'd need two chlorines to make up the oxidation number two of barium. And, but we would not say barium dichloride. Uh, and because CRO4 has an oxidation number of minus two, it balances out the plus two of the barium. So we just say barium chromate, but that's not why we only say one barium and one chromate that even if there even if it were possible to have multiple ions um, attached to the barium we would not count those for example as I just said uh, just a second ago BaCl2 barium chloride 
is not barium dichloride, it's just barium chloride. Similarly, zinc sulfate, if we had to replace the sulfate with chlorines, we'd once again put two chlorines there. That would be ZnCl2, but we would still call it zinc chloride. This happens whenever we have a metal bonded to a nonmetal. Uh, there are some exceptions, of course. For example, NH4NO2 is still named as an ionic compound because it is an ionic compound. It exists as a salt. So that's ammonium nitrate. Uh, and this is one of the few cases, like when, whenever ammonium is involved, we treat ammonium as though it's a metal and the NO2, well, it's already a nonmetal and uh, we name it as a salt, well, which it is, uh, it, because NH4NO2 is ionic. Um, but normally what happens is that ionic bonds are normally formed between a metal and a non-metal, and you can see with the exception of ammonium nitrate, this seems to work all the way through, all the way through these examples. And the only time it fails is P2O5, which is, ion is, is not ionic, it's covalent anyway. So we call that diphosphorus pentoxide. Now let's go to the uh, a few more binary compounds and let's see if you can name these. Okay, now um, magnesium chloride, MgCl2. Now this time I gave you the name, you had to remember the oxidation number on magnesium and the oxidation number on chlorine. Now normally uh, chlorine has, you, you'll learn later in grade 12, that chlorine has a lot of different oxidation numbers, but um, we're only asking for the most common ones that exist. So because chlorine is a halogen, we just treat it as though it has minus one. And so and because Mg is plus 2, uh, 2 minus 1s balance out the plus 2, and so we say MgCl2. So we have to remember the oxidation numbers, and certainly the most common oxidation numbers for these species. If we see lead 4 oxide, oxygen is always minus 2, and what's, th what's the charge on lead 4? It, well, it's given by the number here. It, the charge is plus 4. So 2 minus 2s balance out the plus 4, so we have to write PbO2. Copper 1 sulfide uh, means the copper is of a plus 1, the sulfide is already minus 2 because it's below oxygen on the periodic table, and so we say Cu2S. Ammonium hydroxide, once again, uh, notice no clue given as to what the ratios are, and remember this is named as a salt. Um, this... Um, a salt or an ionic compound. I keep saying salt all the time, but when I say salt, I mean ionic compound. And this is given as NH4OH. We know that hydroxide is minus one as a compound ion, and NH4 is plus one, so they only need to be one to one. Potassium dichromate, well, dichromate is Cr2O7 with a minus two charge, so this compound ion has a minus two charge, the potassium only has a plus one, so it takes two potassiums for every dichromate, and so we say K2Cr2O7. Calcium periodate. The, the periodate ion is minus one, calcium is plus two, so we need two periodates for every calcium. Sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. Properties of ionic and covalent compounds. State the properties of covalent compounds. Covalent compounds tend to have low melting and boiling points, usually existing as liquid or gas at room temperature. Molecular solids exist at room temperature and usually have very high molecular weights. Which of these are likely to be covalent compounds? Iron 2 hydroxide, methane, sodium chloride, or sulfur dioxide. 
I'll pause the video. Answer, methane and sulfur dioxide. There's actually two answers. Notice methane is such a common compound that you, that you don't normally say carbon tetrahydride, which no reason why you couldn't. It's a systematic name, but it's so common we call it methane. Now what about the shapes of these compounds? Here's a bunch of compounds and just tell me the shapes. Pause the video until you've answered them. Okay, oxygen gas is linear, methane is tetrahedral, water is bent, boron trifluoride is trigonal planar, carbon dioxide is linear, ammonia is trigonal pyramidal, hydrogen cyanide is linear. Notice that you had to probably work out these. If you needed a Lewis diagram, the Lewis diagram would have been very useful in these in order to remind you of the rule of eight and uh, it would also allow you to count the lone pairs so that you could be able to say what the shapes are. And remember, the lone pairs do not participate in the shapes, uh, in the naming of the shapes. The only thing that participates in the shapes are the nuclei of the atoms. chemical reactions. Classify the reaction with reasons. This is a neutralization reaction. This is because an acid and a base react to form a salt, NaCl, and water. Classify this reaction with reasons. This is a combustion reaction. Oxygen is consumed, carbon dioxide and water are produced. Students are also expected to remember the reaction types reviewed for grade 10, synthesis, decomposition, single displacement and double displacement. And finally, will an acid or base form? Will an acid or base form if CO2 and H2O are reacted? Provide a balanced equation and name the product. Answer, acid. This is, always happens in the blood lymph. CO2 and H2O make hydrogen carbonate or carbonic acid, H2CO3. The product is carbonic acid. If CaO and H2O are reacted, will an acid or base form? Provide a balanced equation and name the pro product. Answer, CaO and H2O make calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. And, C and calcium hydroxide is a base. And uh, thank you for watching.